Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Saturday, May 21st, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about David Perdue, Brian Kemp, Donald Trump, and the Georgia gubernatorial race with a primary set to occur in just a few days. This upcoming Tuesday, Georgia is holding their primary for governor, for secretary of state, for everything influential and impactful for the United States. And engrossed throughout all of this is the standard divide we have been seeing in areas and regions across the nation where President Trump has one pick, but the voters have another. In this specific case, Governor Brian Kemp is the incumbent, won back in 2018 through a runoff election against then-Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, went on to win the general election against Stacey Abrams, and is now vying for the governorship yet again. David Perdue is a senator, or was a senator, who was first elected back in 2014, the former CEO of Dollar General, a well-known name across insider politics, and became a well-known name across the state of Georgia through his candidacy, won in 2014, then lost re-election in 2021 against John Ossoff, and is now deciding to run for governor instead of Senate or House or practically any other position across the state. David Perdue has been endorsed by President Donald Trump. That endorsement came a very significant time ago. When you take a look at the timing of the endorsement, it was December 6th, 2021, and it was at no one's surprising. David Perdue had entered into the race, and it was very clear that he thought he could win, because otherwise he would not have entered into the race. Brian Kemp, on the other hand, has received endorsements from more career and establishment Republicans, such as George Bush, Mike Pence, Chris Christie. These are people that are engrossed in America's politics that don't exactly embody President Trump to the same extent that obviously Trump would or some of the other endorsements that David Perdue has received. Vernon Jones, a former candidate within this race, and Governor Sarah Palin. The Republican Governors Association has supported Brian Kemp, but that's not because they necessarily agree with Brian Kemp's policies more than David Perdue. The Governors Association, the NRSC, and the NRCC have made it clear that they will back incumbents in every single race, that they do not push away from not electing incumbents. I think there might be some very few exceptions in the House of Representatives, but when it comes down to the United States Senate, they're backing Lisa Murkowski, who voted to convict President Trump. They're backing all of the incumbents that are deciding to run. Same thing with the National Governors Association, so or the Republican Governors Association. So that's not necessarily a surprising endorsement, but it is just there. Uh, I'm explaining it to you so you can uh, understand a little bit why there is that endorsement for Brian Kemp already. Now, the political betting markets are very solid and very uh, believing that Brian Kemp will win this Republican nomination, and they believe so for good reason. Based off of where we are in the polls, Governor Brian Kemp is up about 25 points statewide, getting an average of 56% of the vote to David Perdue's 31%. This margin of victory is substantial because it didn't always last. When Brian Kemp was first running for governor, there were heavy considerations that Brian Kemp might actually lose the Republican primary. This is an article from May of 2021 where uh, they quote one Republican voter who says, in general, I think he's done a good job, he being Brian Kemp, but I don't think he did a good job at handling the 2020 election. When Donald Trump slammed Brian Kemp for his inability to handle the election, voters turned on him, and it was very apparent. And this is something that people had taken into consideration a year ago when considering their primary wins and primary, uh, sorry, primary uh, candidates and who they were going to support and who they wanted to win. Republican Kenny, uh, Kelly C. Royce, I believe that's how you pronounce it, says that, you know, when she was asked about Brian Kemp, she said it was a loaded question, that she voted for Kemp and she also voted for Trump. She said he did a good job, but he did a bad job, or sorry, another Republican said that he did a good job in general, but did a bad job at handling the election. The same quote that they use at the top line for this paper. Another thing as you scroll down is that voters here were a little bit apprehensive about his ability to handle uh, elections in the future. But it did find and did reference a poll from December that Brian Kemp had about a 73% app approval rating amongst the GOP. That's pretty good for someone who's trying to win amongst the Republican Party. I think it's very interesting. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I think it's very interesting that we are now looking at this primary a year in advance, or at least a year later, and seeing that Brian Kemp has certainly won a significant larger portion of the vote, primarily because people are more happy with the way that he is going to handle elections, or maybe happy with some of the things that he had done. I started to show you guys an article that said Purdue had Trump in Georgia, Kemp had everything else. I read through it and I highlighted some key parts that I want to go through to explain further how David Purdue actually ended up losing this race and how Brian Kemp ended up on top. 
there's a bunch of different factors that ended up impacting the outcome of this race that we will see on Tuesday. But the very clear result is in. Brian Kemp is going to be renominated and probably re-elected this November. But that's going to be a much more difficult task than what Brian Kemp had to do in this Republican primary, even though he had to do so many things in order for this lead and for this uh, victory to really surmount and take place across the state of Georgia. Now, for a bit of historical context before we get into the article about why David Perdue even thought this was possible, well, for obvious reason, Donald Trump was just that nominee that people still clung on to. They thought that this was going to be the it nomination, and that was going to be the end of it. And when you take a look at the early polling data, as soon as Donald Trump had made the endorsement for David Perdue, the numbers started to get close. Brian Kemp and David Perdue were off each other by about 10 points, 15 points statewide. As an incumbent, that is not necessarily the result that you want. Donald Trump as the previous nominee influenced the Republican primary to an extent, but that influence has certainly worn off. The first poll taken following the Trump endorsement Brian Kemp and David Perdue were tied across the state of Georgia. Tied. Then, a month later, the endorsement still had a positive impact, but it wasn't enough to put Brian Kemp, sorry, put David Perdue in the lead. Quinnipiac University released a poll that showed Brian Kemp with a seven point lead. Then, Trafalgar came out with a poll that shows Brian Kemp with a nine point lead. Fox 5 Insider Advantage, what was a tie before, ended up now with a 9-point lead for Brian Kemp. Fox News released one that showed Kemp ahead by 11. The University of Georgia came out with one showing Kemp ahead by 11. And then The Hill Emerson College released a poll in the beginning of April that showed Brian Kemp ahead by 11. But by mid-April, we started to see the tides turn. For a variety of reasons, people became less willing to back David Perdue in this primary. As a result, Brian Kemp's lead skyrocketed. In the five most recent polls, Brian Kemp is up 24, 25, 26, 16, 32, the lowest being a 16-point lead, which just so happens to be the largest of any poll moving beyond mid-April backwards. Brian Kemp in the most recent poll from Fox News, an A-rated pollster, shows Brian Kemp ahead by 32 percentage points. That is impressive. It shows Kemp at 60% and Purdue at 28%. These polls are telling us that Georgia is going to go to Brian Kemp, and that is exactly what the betting markets are telling us. Brian Kemp, on the historical level, did well in 2018, but did so because of a Trump endorsement, which is why this whole thing is so weird. To see Donald Trump come out with statements such as this back in September of 2021 at a Georgia rally, saying that Stacey Abrams is probably better than Brian Kemp because Brian Kemp is a rhino, Republican in name only. Donald Trump has been slamming Kemp left and right, and yet somehow this is the result. The reason why I'm showing you 2018, and if you've watched my video about Georgia, you know that I mentioned this, but in 2018, Brian Kemp actually ran in the first uh, regular primary and didn't get a significant portion of the vote got about 25.51% of the vote. Casey Cagle was the incumbent lieutenant governor and got 39% of the vote. So how did Brian Kemp end up becoming the nominee? Days before the primary, he was endorsed by President Donald Trump. While he was building up that lead partially on his own, there was a significant uh, expectation and result from the Trump endorsement within the state of Georgia that Casey Cagle, as the lieutenant governor, received less votes in the runoff than he did in the first round. Donald Trump didn't endorse Brian Kemp in the first round and waited until the runoff election, and he chose correctly. Donald Trump's influence then was so impactful that that's largely what I think geared David Perdue to decide to run within the state of Georgia. Now, I'm bringing this up to show you that the Trump endorsement definitely made an impact in the past, and certainly made at least somewhat of an impact in this election. But as time went on, the Trump endorsement's impact really weathered away. I wonder if Donald Trump had made the endorsement maybe two weeks ago that David Perdue would be in a much better position. Because while everyone was corralling behind Brian Kemp, all of a sudden the number one guy within the GOP at this point is endorsing the opposition candidate. Leaving this endorsement out for six months for Brian Kemp to implement his own strategies through his power of the incumbency, he's done a lot of things which we will talk about in just a moment. Maybe he would have been, David Perdue being he, would have been better off had Trump endorsed him later down the line. But at the end of the day, what happened happened, and now Brian Kemp is absolutely set for victory. 
So this article did a bit of an autopsy, sort of like this video, talking about how uh, David Perdue ended up losing. And like I said previously, there were some things that I decided to highlight because I thought it was a very interesting article and it explained a good amount. It says, to begin with, when David Perdue was figuring out whether he was going to run back in September of 2021, that Donald Trump was really the only one asking him to run. It says here that a bunch of former Purdue aides and advisor had advised him to not run, that he just simply should not enter into the race. Now, David Purdue hadn't exactly explored governor as his first option for running. He filed to run for Senate in the state of Georgia back in early 2021, decided to withdraw his name just a week later. A lot of people expect uh, that that was done as a result of Donald Trump's influence, saying that, you know, I have a candidate, Herschel Walker, lined up here, don't run for Senate, run for governor. And then months later, as we see, he was deliberating it in September. And while his aides had ultimately said, don't do it, he decided to listen to President Trump at the end of the day. And as a result, he is now running for governor. It says that David Perdue thought that Donald Trump was a magic wand. This is from Newt Gingrich, the former Speaker of the House, a Trump ally, who was amongst Mr. Purdue or uh, David Purdue's most high-profile Georgia supporters. Uh, Newt Gingrich actually comes from Lucy McBath's district, the 6th congressional district in the state of Georgia that John Ossoff almost flipped back in 2017. Ended up after Gingrich, I think, to Tom Price, but we're moving down a, a very interesting rabbit hole here. But the point being that Newt Gingrich even could see it. He says that in retrospect, it's hard to understand David's campaign, referring to David Purdue. And it's certainly not the campaign those of us who were for him expected. It's as if the primary can uh, campaign ended up falling flat on its face and at the surprise of many of those who decided to support him. Now, it says that Donald Trump has been most invested in this election, in this primary, more than anything, saying that it probably is the biggest electoral setback since his own defeat back in the 2020 election. Not any of the primaries or elections beforehand, and that probably is true. Donald Trump himself gave $2.64 million to groups helping David Perdue, more than he has given to any other politician. And it shows that Donald Trump truly was invested in this. It says, though, that Brian Kemp also did a bunch of political maneuvering on his own, using the powers of his office to cut off David Perdue from his allies, and also implement policies and maps and strategies to use the power of the incumbency to punish Purdue supporting politicians. In addition to that, it says here that he offered quote-unquote goodies to voters, including a gas tax holiday that conveniently runs through the end of May, just past the primary. It's interesting. David Perdue also is not unknowingly about this polls. I mean, he expects potentially to lose, as indicated by this poll. It says we may not win Tuesday. Quite surprising to hear from someone who, you know, doesn't necessarily willingly accept election results in the truest sense. But he says, hell no, I'm not down 30 points. We may not win Tuesday, but I guarantee you we are not down 30 points. It's interesting he uses this uh, level of communication with the media, recognizing that he might not win, but really pushing back on some of these polls you can't really look at this and say that he's up at any point. I'm not surprised he isn't saying he's up at any point, that he's up, but I am a little bit surprised that he's already uh, gearing up for a loss, at least from what is indicated here. He's like, I can guarantee you Brian Kemp isn't going out to the media and saying, I might lose Tuesday because he knows he won't and the polls don't show that he's going to. So why would you say that unless you recognize that you're going to lose? I wonder if David Perdue will willingly accept the election results uh, easily as uh, after the primary occurs. Now, it shows that uh, Brian Kemp targeted those who decided to uh, support David Perdue. You find it with congressional districts where there was uh, a, a esteemed politician who had been supporting David Perdue, whose son wanted to run in another congressional district and didn't get to run in that other congressional district because Brian Kemp's map ended up drawing him out. There's a whole number of things here that show how Brian Kemp used his office to pressure politicians around him, or at least force others or punish others for supporting David Perdue. But it also doesn't seem as if David Perdue is as invested in this as previous races, saying that he invested just $500,000 of his own money in his bid for governor when he spent $3.8 million when he ran for Senate back in 2014. It is interesting, but we will see uh, what's happening here. Now, looking at uh, another statement from President Trump back in April, saying that the New York Times should focus on his endorsements, not on the David Perdue one, sort of indicating again, like David Perdue's own statement, 
that he expects a loss, trying to push himself away from someone who he endorsed and is expected to lose. Same thing with what he did with Mo Brooks, except he had more time for Mo Brooks, relinquishing that endorsement earlier on when it looked like Brooks was not going to end up winning. President Trump went out to Truth Social and tried to finalize the message here, saying that Brian Kemp was the worst governor in the country. Not a Democrat, not an independent governor, but instead a Republican governor from Georgia, with it being the worst governor in the country on election integrity. Like the statements that were made from President Trump previously, I'm not surprised from them. But at the end of the day, what Donald Trump is doing is trying to build this narrative that Brian Kemp is not the right candidate for Georgia Republicans, but that clearly isn't working on voters that maybe Donald Trump thought it would work on. In the final statement of the article, it says that Brian Kemp's lieutenant governor has made a statement. This lieutenant governor has been an outspoken critic of President Trump and opted to not run for re-election, saying that David Perdue made a bad bet six months ago when he jumped in the race and thought, because Donald Trump likes me, I'm going to win. He bet wrong. And it looks very clearly that while there may be, and maybe was, some level of uh, this idea that Kemp and Purdue could be in a competitive race, that Purdue could realistically win this race, has completely vanquished. The entire idea and the realm of possibility that Purdue wins this primary Tuesday is very uh, out of the question. We really don't see a high chance. The numbers don't tell us a good story for David Purdue. And at the end of November, uh, at the end of Tuesday, we will find that Brian Kemp will win this Georgia governor's primary because it makes sense. He's an incumbent. He's now popular. And President Trump's endorsement being put to the truest test really isn't holding up to standard. While Donald Trump may have swayed the races in North Carolina and other congressional races and maybe some governor's races, it is very clear and uh, Senate races, it is very clear in the state of Georgia that voters are looking past that endorsement, that even though David Perdue might be a recognizable name, his loss in the Senate on top of a number of other factors that Brian Kemp has exploited and utilized to his advancement for his own benefit, that is all what is leading Brian Kemp to victory and pushing David Perdue further and further down in the numbers to a point where maybe even on Tuesday, he won't be even able to crack one third of the vote across the state of Georgia. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 governor election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.